Muons are particles that are created high in the atmosphere. They occur when ultraviolet radiation strikes particles in the upper atmosphere, and one of the decay products is a muon. The muon is going to be traveling very quickly, approximately 0.9997 times the speed of light, and it has a half-life of about 1.5 times 10 to the negative 6 seconds. The muons are formed on average about 10 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. So if we do a quick calculation, what we see is that the muon is going to take a time that's going to be described by the distance it has to travel divided by the speed, 10 kilometers divided by 0.9997 the speed of light, which gives us 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 5 seconds. This is approximately 22 half-lives. What this means is that if we consider the number of particles or the number of muons that we start with, that they're going to decay to almost zero after 22 half-lives. So our scientist goes out thinking that there should be no muons arriving on the surface of the Earth, sticks out their muon detector, and they discover, much to their surprise, many muons are arriving on the surface of the Earth. So how can we address this? We can address this by realizing that there must be some time dilation effect. Because the muons are traveling so quickly, the special relativity effects of time dilation must occur. So what we have is that the muon is going to measure what we call the proper time. And the scientist is going to measure the dilated time. That is, the scientist's time will be longer than the muon's time. So as we go through this calculation, we see that according to the muon, it only takes 8.1 times 10 to the negative seconds to arrive on the surface of the Earth. That's only about half of a half-life. So if we go back to our graph, we see that instead of having almost zero muons arriving on the surface of the Earth, there should be significantly more. Approximately 7 out of every 10 muons created should arrive on the surface of the Earth. So our scientist is relieved. But then, they think of something else. If we look at the distance that the muons have to travel, 10 kilometers, and the time that it takes them to travel, 8.1 times 10 to the negative 7 seconds, what we end up with is a speed of 1.2 times 10 to the 10 meters per second. This is significantly faster than the speed of light. So there must be something else going on. And that something else is that for every bit of time dilation, we have an equal amount of length contraction. So we have the equation L is equal to L0 multiplied by the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. We see that this is the same term that we've seen before with time dilation, except now it's in the numerator instead of the denominator. So we take the length of 10 kilometers and we multiply it by the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. We see that the muon only travels 245 meters. This means that according to the muon, it is traveling 0 0.9997 times the speed of light, and according to the scientist. And we have consistency. The production of these videos has been generously supported by the Nova Scotia Teachers Union through the Program Development Assistance Fund.